What's going on guys? My name is Matthew and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, what we're going to be going over is how to use the Lumetri Color Panel in Adobe Premiere Pro. We're going to learn how to color grade your footage and do a deep dive on it. Let's dive in. Right, guys let's dive on in here so in this tutorial we're going to go over how to color grade your footage now the way to do this is to use the lumetri color tool right up here on the top right of the screen if you don't see this available to you in your premiere project what you can do is you can go to window and then select lumetri color right here you can also choose your lumetri scopes but we'll get to that in a later video for now, let's focus on Lumetri Color. All right, now let's take a closer look and click on Basic Correction to start. You'll see numerous options right here. You'll start with the Input LUT, if there's a custom LUT you want to include into your footage. In this color section, you can select your white balance. You can adjust the temperature and tint of your footage, and you can also decrease and increase the saturation. So for example, let's take a look at the temperature. If we drag it here to the left, you'll notice that the image gets a little bluer. If we drag it to the right, it gets a little warmer. Pretty cool. And if we double click, it takes us back to our original look. Same thing with the tint. If we go to the left, you'll notice it gets a little greener. And if we go to the right, a little more on the pink side of things. Double click and we're back to normal. Same thing with the saturation. If we want to move it to the left, suddenly it becomes a little more black and white. You can really create that signature black and white look just by using the saturation tool in and of itself. Now, if we go over to the right, increase it, we see that the color is a little more vivid. It gives it a punchier look. Double click, and we're back to normal. All right, now let's take a look at the light over here. So this controls the brightness of your image. So if we start with the exposure, if we drag it to the right, you'll notice that the entire image becomes brighter. If we drag it to the left, it becomes a little darker. Double click, back to normal. Now let's take a look at the contrast. If we drag it to the right, you'll notice that the image gets a little punchier. So if you've seen a lot of movies that were made in the 2000s, especially like action films like The Dark Knight and others, there's a high use of contrast in these films. It really gives it that punchy look. And what it does is it lowers the shadows in the image and increases the highlights. If we shift it to the left, you'll notice that the image becomes a little more faded. The, the shadows are increased, the highlights are decreased, so there's less variance in the image in that way. Double click and we're back to normal. Take a look at the highlights here. Now the highlights focus in on the higher tones or, well, the highlights of the image. If you drag it to the right, you'll notice that the sky gets brighter. That's the um, brightest portion of the image. So when you drag the highlights up and down, you'll notice that that specifically is affected. So move it to the right, notice how the sky gets very bright. Move it to the left, gets a little darker. Double click and we're back to normal. Now let's take a look at the shadows. Same thing, we drag it to the right, it focuses in on the lower tones of the image, the shadows, that is. We drag it to the right and it actually brightens those shadows up just a little bit. Now, if we move it to the left, notice how it gets darker. Quite a difference. Double click, back to normal. Now let's take a look at the whites. Similar to the highlights, this will focus on the higher tones of your image. So if we drag it to the right, you'll notice that it gets brighter. Drag it to the left, it gets a little darker. Double click, back to normal. Similar with the blacks versus the shadows. If we bring it up, it kind of brightens those lower tones to the left, lowers them, gives it that punchier, grittier kind of look. Double click, back to normal. And that's your basic correction tools. 
Now let's take a look at the creative section. Over here, where it says look, if we click, this gives you a choice of LUT. So there's a lot of preset LUTs that gives you a kind of distinctive look if you don't want to mess with the basic correction tools too much. So this gives you kind of a preset look and kind of gives you a starting point. And then from there you can adjust. So for example, if we take a look at this bleach tool. So if you're familiar with films like Fight Club, um, there is a particular color correction known as bleach bypass. And it kind of gives it a washed out contrasty look. So this preset here gives that bleach bypass look. If we want to adjust the intensity, um, we can lower the effect by dragging it to the left. And we can increase the effect by dragging it to the right. Now over here, we can change some other settings. We have faded film, sharpen, vibrant saturation. If we go to faded film and drag it to the right, it kind of washes out the image a little bit, gives it that little fade, that kind of tint of white almost, the further you go to the right. And if we go all the way back to the left, um, it remains unadjusted. Sharpen, if we drag that to the right, it kind of increases the mid-tonal details of your image. And if you drag it to the left, it kind of gives it more of a blur. So depending on what kind of look you're trying to achieve, this could be a fun tool to mess around with. Double click and we go back to normal. So vibrance is kind of similar to saturation where if we increase it, it kind of brings out some of those colors. So if we drag it to the right, you'll see it's a little punchier in that regard. And then if we drag it to the left, there's less saturation. It looks kind of muddy and washed out. And again, depending on what kind of look you're going for, that can be a thing. Double click back to normal. And saturation similar. Drag that to the right. Gives it more color to the left, less color. Double click back to normal. I'm going to go back up here and just remove the look. Now down here, you'll notice shadow tint and highlight tint. So this focuses in on the color of the shadows or the highlights. So if we take this and drag the say towards the blue, what it does is it takes the dark tones, for example, up over in here, and makes them bluer. Now if we drag this to the left and up, maybe towards the yellow, notice how it brings out those colors, especially here in the green hills. If we double click, back to normal. Similar with the highlight tint, if we drag this down towards the blue, say, notice how, especially in the sky, in the background, it really brings out that color. Now let's take it up towards the orange, and it kind of gives it that um, polluted LA sky look, which kind of makes sense, really, because this was filmed not too far from Los Angeles. Um, now if we double click, uh, similar to before, brings it back to normal. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the curve section. So I'm going to bring your attention now to the RGB curves. So what this does is it takes the red, green, and blue portion of your image and allows you to individually adjust that. The white here, it doesn't really focus on a particular color in your image. It more focuses on the general image. So what does that mean? So let's take a look at the white, for example. Right down here, this portion of the line if you adjust this, it allows you to adjust the shadows and lower tones of your image. If you focus more on adjusting in the middle, that adjusts the midtones. Over here to the right, the top right, focuses in on the highlights. So, for example, let's say I put a dot right here. By doing so, simply click. Now let's drag this up and to the left a little bit. See that? What it's doing is it's mostly adjusting the midtones, slightly adjusting the shadow, slightly adjusting the highlight, but mostly in the midtones. 
where the meat of your image really is. That's being brightened. If we take this down, it's being darkened. Pretty neat. If we double click, it takes it back to normal. Now let's go up over here to the highlights. There's a dot at the very edge that you can see. If we drag this down, it focuses in on the highlights and makes it a little darker. Now, if we move it to the left, it also focuses in on the highlights and makes it a little brighter. Pretty cool. Double click and it's back to normal. Now, same thing with the shadows. Take this dot right here. If we move it up, brightens the shadows. Move it to the right, makes the shadows a little darker, gives it that grittier, punchier look that we kind of alluded to before. Double click and it's back to normal. Now, if we wanted to get a little funkier with it, what if we wanted to add multiple dots? Say where the grid aligns. One common thing that a lot of colorists will do in the editing world is create what's known as an S-curve. The S-curve increases contrast in the image by taking the shadows right here, making them a little darker, and then taking the highlights right over here and making them a little brighter. Notice how it's really variant in the way it looks. Grittier down here, brighter up here. Again, very popular in the 2000s especially. You can achieve the opposite effect if we took this, made the shadows a little brighter, and the highlights a little darker. It gives that faded look, but depending on what you're trying to achieve, serves its purpose, absolutely does. If we double click, we go back to the default setting. Now let's take a look at the red over here. You can do similar things, but it focuses specifically on the reds in your image. So let's take the midtones, make them a little brighter. See that? Kind of gives it a pink look. Now, if we want to drag it down, it removes any red that's in the image and makes the greens and the blues a little more present. Pretty interesting. Double click, back to normal. Let's go over here to the green. Same thing, let's add a dot here. Let's increase it. Notice the green really gets punchy. Now if we decrease it, fewer greens. Now the blues and the reds are a little more present. Double click, back to the default. Now let's take a look at the blue. Let's do the same thing. Let's increase it right here in the midtones. Blue's a little punchier. So the sky, the background, mountains, they're a little more present. Reduce it, and suddenly the greens and the reds of the image are more present. Double click, back to normal. Now over here we have hue and saturation curves. Now in more recent updates of Premiere, this has become a secondary use in terms of how we can take individual colors and reduce them or increase them. So for example, in the hue versus sat, what we can do is we can take this little eyedropper right here, choose a specific color in the image. So for example, let's take one of the green yellow colors over here. It creates three dots. And what we do is we take the middle of the dots and we can increase them or decrease them. So what it's doing is it's taking that specific color that we chose and either increasing or decreasing the saturation of that specific color. So again, let's take it up and notice how the greens really start to pop right over here in particular. Now let's take it down. Not so much, a little desaturated over here. Now if we double click, it takes it back to normal. Now let's take a look at hue versus hue. Similar to before, let's take that eyedropper and click the green. And similar to before, we have the three dots and we want to choose the middle dot to really adjust that particular color. So let's take this, bring it up. This is a little different now. What it's doing is it's 
changing the hue of the color that we chose, not the saturation, the hue. So when we change the hue, it really changes the color altogether. So notice as we bring it up further and further and further, it's getting a little more pink, a little more purple, and it kind of changes the image really when you look at it. If you're familiar with the Southern California area, there's a thing called super blooms that exist around here. And really when you change that color, it actually creates sort of a super bloom effect. So you could really like fake a super bloom if you wanted. Now let's take it the opposite direction. It actually gets a little greener. More akin to how the mountains would look after a recent rainfall. Pretty cool. Double click and we're back to normal. Now let's take a look at hue versus luma. So same as before, let's take the eyedropper. Let's choose the green. And what this will do now is change the brightness of the color that you selected. So let's take that middle dot again. Let's take it up and notice this is a little different. What we've done now is brightened this part of the image, right? Now let's take it in the other direction. Let's bring it down and see that? Gives it a darker look. So really this gives you a lot of interesting possibilities if you want certain colors to be more prevalent than others, especially when it comes to the exposure of them. It's pretty interesting. Double click and we're back to normal. Now let's take a look at these two down here. So these are a little different. If we take a look at Luma versus Sat, and again, doing the same thing where we select that green color, if we bring this up, it increases the saturation of the area we selected. And if we bring it down, decreases it. Double click and we're back to normal. And then if we take a look at the Sat versus Sat, Really, this just focuses in on the general saturation of the image. So if we took the green right here, brought this up. Again, it's really just focusing on the vibrance of the particular color. Bring it down. Not so much. It's not my favorite tool, candidly, of these. But if you so chose, that's an option. And if we double click, back to normal. Now let's take a look at the color wheels and match tool. Now over here, you can see we have the shadows, we have the midtones, we have the highlights. So these allow you to really focus in on those particular portions of your image if you want individual control. So let's take a look at these shadows right here. If we take this thing to the left and drag it up, it's taking those shadows and brightening them. Take it into the opposite direction and it darkens them. If we double click, brings it back to normal. Now, another thing we can do is we can change the color of the shadows. Bring it down to the right, it makes it a little bluer. Up here to the left, a little more of that orange yellow look. If we take it this way, it's more green, a little more pink if we take it this way. You get the idea. And if we double click, we can bring it back to normal. Now, taking a look at the midtones, similar. Let's take this to the left, bring it up. Notice how that gets a little brighter kind of more of the general image. Now, if we take this back down, again, makes it darker. Double click, brings it back to normal. Same thing with the wheel. Let's take it up, you know, towards the blue, for example. Kind of gives it that blue look. Up over here, it gives it a warmer tint. And really, depending on which direction you go, that's kind of the color in which it will take you. Double click and we're back to normal. And also here with the highlights, let's bring it up. Notice the bright tones get a little brighter. Bring it down, makes it darker. Double click back to normal. And same thing with the color. Depending on the direction you go, the highlights become that color, essentially. So bluer here, pinker here. And depending on what look you're going for, it gives it a pretty cool aesthetic. Double click and we take it back to normal. So now let's take a look at the HSL secondary tool. There's a few things we can do in here, but 
what this essentially does is it allows you to isolate a color and change the look of it essentially. So if we take this eyedropper tool, again, let's choose the green. What we can do is we can go over here, click on the check mark, and notice how it grays out everything except for the color that we chose. Pretty cool. Now up over here, what we can do is we can increase or decrease the range of the luma, the saturation, the hue, so that we can get the exact selection that we want. So let's take this, drag it to the right, and notice how it will increase that range. Similar here with the saturation, if we take it to the right, same thing. Now we're seeing more and more of those hills, right? Luma, similar. Drag it to the right, and there you go. Now what we can also do is we can denoise the selection that we made. If we drag it to the right, we can also add blur to it. So it kind of feathers out the selection. You can really fine tune it until you get the exact selection you want. You know, we don't see it here in this piece of footage, but a really good use of this tool is selecting the skin tone of a subject in your footage and really fine tuning the color of that person's skin. In a future video, I'll go over this in more detail, but you can use the Lumetri scopes and kind of fine tune the color that you're going for. There's a line known as the skin tone line that you can use to match the perfect skin tone for your footage for eventual export. But we'll go over that in a future video. In this case, this will be fine for the purposes of this video. So if we take this, uncheck it, we see the original image again. Now down here, we can color correct what we just selected, right? So turning on the check mark, let's go over to the temperature. If we drag this to the left, it makes the image a little bluer. To the right, a little warmer. Now let's uncheck this again. Notice how it's a little different. It gives these hills a different look. So right now it's warmer. If we cool it, a little bluer. Pretty cool, right? Let's double click so you can see the original image again. And I'll again drag it to the right and the left so you can see the difference. Interesting, right? Same thing with the tin. Move it to the right, gives it a pink look. To the left, greener. Now greener I think looks a little more natural and that's probably something I would be inclined to do in this particular case. But depending on what you're going for, hey, have fun with it, right? We can also play with the contrast. Gives those hills a punchier look when we move it to the right and more of a faded look when we move it to the left. We can even sharpen it. And it's a little more subtle here, but you may notice that there's more detail now in the image when we move it to the right. If we move it to the left, it kind of blurs it out, right? And again, depending on the look you're going for, this could be cool too. And the saturation. The hills look a little more vibrant when we move it to the right and a little more grayed out when we move it to the left. So this is a pretty neat feature, I think, amongst the Lumetri color panel. Lastly, let's take a look at vignette. Now, the vignette effect is very cinematic. It gives the image that extra oomph, in my opinion. So what we can do is we can increase or decrease the amount of effect we want to apply. So if we move it to the right, you'll notice that the edges in the four corners become a little whiter, right? Move it to the left, and it becomes darker. Now, the darker vignette is more traditional, more common. And so for this example, let's stick with the dark. Now let's go down to midpoint. If we move it to the right, it kind of takes away from that vignette effect, makes it a little more subtle. Move it to the left, and becomes really prevalent. 
and if we move it all the way to the left, you'll see the ellipse right here. This is a little too much for this image, so I would put it somewhere around here. I might fine tune it a bit, but this is the general area of where I would put the vignette. We can also change the roundness. If we move it to the right and the left, it comes a little more circular when you move it to the right. Again, this is more of a subtle effect, but depending on what you're going for, good to play with. And then you have feather. If we move it to the right, it kind of adds a feathering effect to the ellipse. Now, really, you really see it over here when we move it to the left, right? So the vignette really is an ellipse around your image that's very feathered. So when we move the feathering to the right, it creates more of that four corner look versus a plain circle on your image, which in my opinion doesn't look great. But again, depending on what you're going for, could have its use. I prefer it somewhere around here, personally. And that's how you use the Lumetri color panel. And there's a lot of things you can do from basic correction to more creative effects to the curves, to the color wheels, the secondary, and the vignette that we just went over. Lots of things you can do to give your image the extra oomph that it needs. That's the tutorial, guys. If you like what you saw here, you can subscribe, like the video, throw down a comment below if you have any questions or thoughts, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Take care.